Hello everyone, so we are going to be diving a bit deeper into the properties of logarithms. I'm going to be saying this quite a lot, but remember that logs are exponents. Uh, so that's kind of where some of these rules sort of come from. Um, so we have three properties with logarithms. We have our product property, quotient property, and power property. These two come directly from the idea of exponents. To relate to exponents, if two things have the same base, and we had exponents, we added them. So if I have the same base and I've got, you know, a product of some sort, this might be written as 12, so we could say that that's log b of 4 and log b of 3. These, all of these properties go both ways. So we might break apart a product, we might take a sum, and make it into a product by multiplying the arguments. For division, kind of how the multiplication went with addition. Similar idea with the fact that with exponents, we subtracted. So if I have the log base of, say, 9 over log base of 3, 9 over 3, I can simplify that. We don't subtract or add the actual arguments themselves, we're just subtracting and adding the log of those arguments, which will make more sense when we're looking at some examples, but just don't add any numbers that are here and don't subtract any numbers that are here. We're just actually subtracting the whole log and adding the whole log. And the last property, which is kind of an interesting one, is that if I have the log base of whatever to an argument and its exponent. I can actually just drop down that exponent and multiply the log of that initial argument. Feel free to play around with the calculator a little bit with this one, you like test, you're going to have to do a common log, but you can test, okay, if I'm talking about the log of 3 squared, is that the same thing as 2 times the log of 3, and they are. Uh, you'll get a decimal for both of them, but they will be the same exact decimal. So it's kind of an interesting one. So what we do with these properties is we condense or write expressions as a single logarithm, and then we also expand which is essentially going the opposite direction. So for all these, just keep in mind what your properties are. So if we have a plus, then it's going to multiply my arguments. So I'm still going to have my log base of 5, and then 4 times 3 is 12. So just to write it as a single logarithm, I'm not solving this. I'm not trying to figure out what exponent of 5 gets me 12, I'm just combining this to be a single logarithm. Let's take a look at this one. So I've got a subtraction that should cue to me that I'm talking about division. So I still have log base 6 of 25 over 5. And if I take 25 over 5, we're just looking at 5. Here this one. I've got a little bit more going on. I've got numbers out in front which we can raise as exponents. Both of these have a common log. So I have, bring that exponent up, I've got x squared. Subtraction, remember, means division, over, bring that exponent up, divided the third. We will practice more of these in class, don't worry. Just to get you that kind of general idea. Expanding, so we're going the other way. We are taking, you know, everything that we've got here, applying our properties of exponents, and writing the things so that only one, say, letter or number occurs in each log. So here I have a log base 2. For all of these things, I'm going to have a log base 2, and I'm going to have three of them, because I have an x, I have a y, and I have a z. So for the first one, I'm just talking about the log base 2 of x, nothing special there. And then I'm dividing by the y, so minus 
log base 2 of y. I'm also dividing by the z, so I'm also subtracting log base 2 of z. You could put parentheses around this whole thing and put a plus here because these are being multiplied by each other, uh, but there's nothing wrong with just putting a minus sign for both either. Now let's look at this, look at this one. I've got some multiplication going on as well as an exponent. So, gotta start somewhere. So log of 6. The operation going on between these two guys is multiplication, so that means I'm going to be adding. I have an exponent, so we have to drop it out in front. So 3 log of x. Next term is a y. We are multiplying still, so plus log of y. The other property that we're going to be looking at with logarithms is the change of base formula. So if I was looking back at, say, this problem, and I really wanted to know, for whatever reason, you know, what exponent of 5 does get me 12? I can't write them into the same base, so we use what we call the change of base formula. And this is where we're finally actually going to use our calculators to evaluate the logs. So what the change of base formula says, if I have this base and this argument, I can figure out what the logarithm equals by taking the log of any base I wish of my argument and dividing by that same base log of my base. So these originally wouldn't have been able to be written as powers of themselves, like if we were looking at 4 and 8, we can easily rewrite those as powers of 2, but if say I was looking at that 5 and 12, I really can't rewrite those. So the trick is just rewrite it as, well, make your base the nice one, make your base 10, so that way you could just type it into your calculator. The way I like to help you guys remember which one's going to go which, if you underline log, M's the one that's on top, B is the one that's on the bottom. So like I said, we are going to be using calculators. So the w place that these exist on our inspires, we have to hit that control and then that 10 to the X, we see a little like blue log there. On the 8384s, the log button is just right there. So the inspire just kind of inverted what the 8384 had initially. So, if I'm looking for what exponent of 3 gets me 5, we can approximate in our head, well we know it's more than 1, but it's going to be less than 2. We can find it exactly by doing log of 5 over log of 3, because again if I underline log, 5 is the one that's on top, 3 is the one that's on bottom, so in my calculator, I would just type in log of 5, make sure you close your parentheses over log of 3, and to the nearest thousandth, I'm looking at 1.465. And then for this guy, same idea, I can approximate, I know that 2 to the 4th is 16, so I'm going to be looking a little bit less than that, but to evaluate it, I'm going to do that log of 15 over log of 2, log of 15, close the parentheses, divided by log of 2. You don't have to close the parentheses at the end, it'll know what to do, but you do have to close that parentheses in the middle. And just like we kind of suspected, a little bit less than 4, 3.907. And those are some properties of logs. So we'll look at this more in class, but until then, I'll talk to you later.